Hey guys, welcome to episode 16 of Top Gear Nathaniel 2256. Yes, I know it's been a long time since I made a video on my channel. It's been nearly a month already. But I do have a couple of exclamations for that. Firstly, I have a lot of exams to do and assignments that have to be handed in before I can make any more videos. And secondly, my parents have got the coronavirus. Yep, both my parents. But luckily, I don't have COVID, so that's a good sign. The bad sign is though, is that I can't really go out to make videos because of my parents' COVID illness. So that's why I decided to make another Top Gear episode. And besides, this is the debut of season two. So yeah, a bit of a celebration at least, but still not the best time to record and make this episode though. And yes, I know it's been nearly a year since I have done the cool wall, but I have added some more cars on it to make it look a bit better. And that way you can get an actual idea of what car goes in which. Seriously, Uncle, Uncle, Cool, and Sub Zero. Now, I have six cars to go through in this episode, so we're gonna get started. First up, we have this. This is the Kia C, also known by Jeremy Clarkson as the C apostrophe D. Now, I've actually did add an older version of the seat on the cool wall and I put it in the uncle section. I've been very uninteresting because it's a Kia and Kias like these are unto... What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, unto... <sighs> and Kias are usually un... And, and Kias like these are uninteresting. Now, the thing with this seat, okay, is that compared to the older one, I honestly think this one is a bit worse mainly because it's not as recognizable thanks to this one because of some top gear but i don't mean worse in terms of cars i'm talking about in terms of popularity but actually in terms of driving i think this is a bit better but the thing with the cedar cape is that it's designed to be a hatchback not a special car so unfortunately it's not good enough for me to put it in the sub-zero section I mean, there's only going to be a few cars in the whole ever of this Top Gear in the Phantom 256 series where cars are going to be put in the Sub-Zero section. Because currently, there is only one car that's on the Sub-Zero section, and that is the Toyota GT86. So this, unfortunately, I have to put it in the Uncool section too, just like the old seat. I'm sorry, but that's my opinion on the seat. Next up, we have the Chevrolet Colorado. It's based off the Holden Colorado, also known as the Isuzu D-Max. But I don't know if the new one is anymore because Isuzu made a new D-Max a couple of years ago. I don't think this is the new model, to be honest. The styling of it is not too bad, but the back end looks a bit off though. I don't know if it's because this is, this is a special edition Colorado or if it's just meant that way for all models. Why is that bit of the bed really raised up compared to the door windows? Now, come to think of it, okay, the Chevrolet Colorado is not a bad truck, but you see, it's a Chevrolet. You know, it's not really, but it's branded as a Chevrolet, and I'm not a Chevrolet fan. I find Chevrolets a bit awful on most of their cars, except for the old Corvette and the old Camaros, which are really good, but all the other cars are either here or Now, one example of a car that Chevrolet made that I really don't like is this. This is the Corvette C8 and I really hate it because of the styling of it and it's mid-engine rather than front engine like on all the other models which ruins the spirit of the Corvette. The same thing goes for this too. So this is going to go like the seat in the uncle section. Sorry, but that's again my opinion. Next up we have the Nissan GTR. This is the 2017 version. You can tell by the front end and the wheels. Now, I will admit, it is a good car overall, but there are some things wrong with it. Firstly, the engine needs to be updated because Nissan has had this car in production for nearly 14 years, the same age as me, and they didn't actually really modify the engine that much to make it seem as brand new, except giving it a bit more horsepower and torque. And I also have to admit, it is very expensive compared to some other Japanese sports cars. I know the GTR is meant to be a supercar, which do cost a lot of money, but, you see, Japanese cars are usually cheaper to make than any other cars. For example, German cars, or even British cars. But despite all the problems it has, I do like it. It's not a very fantastic car, and I don't really get how it's still in production today. But I do like it, so I'm going to put it in the cool section. Oh look, we actually have another Kia, but this time, I actually do like this. 
the Kia Optima. Now the Kia Optima is just like the Seed, but it's basically a mid-sized sedan version of it and a bit more luxurious too. I honestly think it's better than the C because it looks better and I think it's got a much nicer interior too. But it does cost quite a lot compared to the seat by a big amount of money. Now the thing with the Optima, okay, is that it has gone through a bit more generations than the seat, but unlike the seat, it actually has improved. And the Optima proves that. So unlike the seat, which I put in the uncool section, I'm putting this in the cool section. So now, here. Okay, we've got two more cars to go through. Next one is this. This is the Ford Galaxy. Now some of you are gonna be saying, oh, that's an S Max, but it's not an S Max. It's a Galaxy, you can tell by the roof. Now I think the Galaxy, out of all the bunch of the cars I've tested today, I think this is the best because it's a Ford and I think Fords are fantastic. Well, I mean, at least ones that are not electric, of course, because I think electric Fords are rubbish. But the Galaxy is very good because I think it looks fantastic for its time and I do love the engine in it. Turbocharged engine, that's perfect for this car. But I don't think it's as pretty as the smaller S-Max, mainly because of how tall it looks compared to the S-Max. Now, one thing you have to remember on this car, okay, is that it's not meant to be special like all the other cars. It's just meant to be a family car. And this is, a, and this is an MPV. And I have to say, it's pretty good for this time. So again, it goes in the cool section. Okay, this is the final car. This, this is the Toyota Highlander. Oh boy, a Toyota SUV from America mainly, which makes it meh. Now I don't hate it, I just think it's a bit rubbish to be honest. I do think the older ones are quite good, but the newer ones feel a bit more American and look more American than the Toyota, which are Japanese cars. But this isn't. This is an American car. Now the thing with the Highlander, okay, is that it's meant to be a really big, big size, four-wheel drive, 4x4 SUV from Toyota. And you may expect it to be Japanese, but it's not. It's American. That wants me to put it in the seriously uncool section because I find American cars rubbish. But since this is built by Toyota and Toyota American cars are not too bad, I'm gonna have to put it in the uncool section about here. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I just don't really like American cars that much, to be honest. And those are all my rankings. Overall, the Ford Galaxy is the best one out of the bunch, and the Toyota Clue, and the Toyota Highlander is the worst over there. So, I know this episode is not very long because I'm in a bit of a rush, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I freaking hate lawnmowers. My neighbor is mowing the lawn. And don't worry, in December, I'm gonna be making two Christmas specials. One at Movie World and one based on a Christmas present I'm getting later this year. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video once again and I'll see you in December. Bye.